the cinema is a show. It must be a good show. And uh, it, it, I think it's important enough to make a good show. Jess Franco is European cinema's foremost rebel. One time assistant to Orson Welles, he later made the first Spanish porn film and features in the Guinness Book of Records as the most prolific filmmaker of all time, with over 200 titles to his credit. Alternatively revered as a genius and reviled as a hack, Franco seems oblivious to criticism. Only one thing matters to him, to keep on filming, no matter what and no matter how. If exploitation had to have a king, I mean, it would really have to be Franco. I mean, nobody could be as passionate about filth and, and, and filmmaking uh, as Franco. Very interesting, the torture chambers of the Inquisition. <laughs> it's got punch. Oh, the storyline's not so hot, but all of the details are absolutely authentic, and some of them are quite extraordinary. And his films are an extreme mishmash of uh, sex, violence, sleaze, and every now and then, some very high art. White Hacienda, rehabilitation camp for delinquent women, no trespassing. <laughs> What is she doing here? <laughs> what do you think she's doing here? Checking up on her slaves. Dirty old man. <laughs> oh. Oh. My father started to make co-production in Spain with a co-producer in Madrid, Sergio Newman. And uh, Sergio had with him a young boy working with him, Jess Franco. Jess Franco is a number formidable. Jesus Franco, a great director. He loves sex and he loves cinema. <laughs> Jess Franco was, was crazy, crazy, uh, but he's a star. Oh, you think I'm crazy? And uh, we had the same taste in music also. He's a huge jazz buff. He, he said, uh, I am myself a musician and a composer. Franco is really into jazz music, and, and, and I think jazz music pretty much captures the spirit of his films. It's very powerful. It's, it's, it's very timeless in a way. It's also very modern. It's very emotional, and uh, you know, it has a certain rhythm to it, a certain drive. And I think you know, that's also what, what can be said about his film. The first movie he directed was uh, Mariquita, La Reine de Tabaret, a musical, yes. Franco had always been a horror fan, but in the late 1950s it was impossible to find a Spanish producer willing to finance a movie in that style. In 1961, he was in Nice in the south of France, together with Marius Le Cerf, head of Eurocine, and Sergio Newman, his Spanish co-producer. They were waiting to start work on a film that was having script problems with the Spanish censor. Franco was feeling restless. One night he went for a walk and noticed what was on at the local cinema. That cinema was uh, projecting the brides of Dracula. So I say to, to them, come with me to the cinema tonight. And <laughs> because it was a new experience for, for both, for producers. I had to show the possibilities, because for them, horror films were some shit they saw when they were children, you know, that's all. They saw that film, and getting out, they said, oh, it's beautiful, oh, it's fantastic, it's very nice, oh, it's very commercial, too. They said, why shouldn't we make a film of this kind? Very good idea, let's do it. Prepare a synopsis. I prepared Dr. Oslo. Melissa, my child, just be patient a while longer. I'll save you, my dear. I shall make you just as beautiful as you were before. The plot of Orloff is the story of a mad surgeon, played by the late great Howard Vernon, who kidnaps dancing girls to graft their skin onto the face of his daughter, who'd been disfigured in an accident. 
The plot is a minor variation on the old 1930s pulp horrors that used to star Boris Karloff or Bela Lugosi. What Franco brought to it was a really heavy dose of sex and sleaziness that was quite an eye-opener for audiences at that time. They were surprised and uh, it was, uh, even in France, it was a little shocking to, uh, to show a movie like this. At this time, it was noticed that uh, there was something special uh, in the movie and uh, also the director who made the movie. Oh. Oh. Oh, horrible. What have they done to you? I think that uh, we have not to forget the context of the life at this time in Spain. General Franco, there were no way to say one word against the church, nothing of sex. Uh, and he was one of the first who were able to speak of sex or to show a little sex, and at this time it was really <laughs> something. It was a reaction against the censor or the establishment uh, of the society of this time. How can you be a director without a, a certain knowledge about what the, the people made before you arrived? So in Spain, most of them were forbidden and the rest were forgotten. Censorship was very heavy in Spain in the 1960s. Even the classics of world cinema often couldn't be shown there for political reasons. Franco was frustrated by the compromises he had to endure. He felt isolated from the real world of movie making. If he was going to make the films he wanted, he would have to leave Spain to do it. My fight or my lifelong is not to enter into the system. It's not to accept the order, you know. Franco avait fondé uh, un parti dont il était l'unique membre. <laughs> so then they say, you're mad? Oh, you, Franco, you're always trying to do this fun and this funny and, and stupid things. Leur esprit est comme ça, donc forcément, dans leur film, il y a aussi quelque chose qui est, qui est comme ça. times they say, it's an amateur director, I say, but thank you very much, because that means I love cinema, you know, but it's the real meaning of the word, and, and uh, this amateurism is disappearing. On pouvait dire qu'il a, qu a fait des films qui, qui déstructuraient le, le récit, le scénario, et c'était un petit peu euh, ce qu'on faisait dans le cinéma underground aussi. Satan, accept the sacrifice that we offer you. C'était euh, euh, non narratif. Il y a certains films de Franco qui sont à la limite du, du non narratif. He likes to be uh, an outsider. He likes to be not part of the system, not part of any system. And whenever he was uh, getting close to, you know, getting part of the system, he just went away, did something completely different, went into another country, worked with different people. Jesus Franco made films everywhere, just to his friends and his enemies. He made half of films everywhere. He made half a film here and half a film there and half a film somewhere else. And eventually they got stuck together as one film or two films or three films or the same film with different titles. The name of the director changed from country to country. Uh, it was always him, but you know, he had all these pseudonyms. Jesus Franco is just a, Jesus, he's a funny man. I mean, he, I don't understand half his films, even when they're understandable. Franco is a number formidable. Oh. 
formidable. C'est un fou total. C'est-à-dire que euh, je me rappelle qu'il avait engagé Janine Reynaud et moi-même pour deux films que nous tournions en même temps. Et nous sommes aperçus qu'il y avait des scènes qui n'étaient dans le découpage ni de l'un ni de l'autre. Et naturellement, parce qu'il y avait un troisième film qu'il tournait aussi pour lui à travers ce film. Et tout ça, sa tête était calme et tout ça, c'était bien organisé dans son petit cerveau. Il savait que tel plan, il le placerait dans tel film, il avait ses découpages parfaits. Il écrivait euh, les scènes euh, deux heures avant de les tourner. Et donc, euh, on lui demandait, euh, qu'est-ce que je fais aujourd'hui Alors, aujourd'hui, il disait, euh, oh ben aujourd'hui, tu meurs. Et, et je me recommande, il expliquait et tout. Il disait, mais je ne comprends pas, je suis déjà morte avant-hier. Euh, il disait, oh, t'occupe pas, <rire> ne cherche pas à comprendre. <rire> The cinema is a show, it must be a good show. And uh, it, I think it's important enough to make a good show. Everyone in the world can make films. I think the only way to, to learn the cinema is to make films. I don't believe in academies and lessons I, I i think it's a profession that you have to start by you know by the first word doing it il tournerait euh, il tournerait n'importe quoi il, il adore euh, il, il adore ça et euh, à la limite euh, ce qu'il filme n'a pas d'importance <rire> mais il faut qu'il filme c'est un malade de la caméra Franco confesses to being an unrepentant voyeur. From behind his camera, he watches a world of his own creation, filming the bizarre tales that his fertile imagination has dreamed up. He's seeing everything through a lens, you know, through the shutter, through filters, and just seeing everything through a camera, and judging it through a camera. He loves a lot the milieu carceral féminin, the vampires, the euh, fantastic. Euh sexe et le fantastique, euh, euh, oui, c'est toujours un petit peu le même monde, c'est pour ça, c'est un univers. Many Franco films feature weird nightclub acts. He shoots these sadistic set pieces in a series of shocking close-ups, and suddenly his camera pulls back, and we become part of the audience, aware for the first time that we are watching a show. Thank you. Franco uses this strange and disorientating device in film after film. He's obviously a man who loves filmmaking. He loves having a camera in his hand. Uh, the other thing he loves is women. You have lovely breasts, firm and ripe. They need to be caressed and loved. I'll take your pants off for you. Oh, yes. Ce qu'il montre des femmes n'est jamais méprisant. Il n'a pas un regard salace. Il a un regard euh, amoureux. Sur, euh, sur les femmes, sur le corps des femmes. Les femmes qu'il emploie, notamment Lina Romé, est complètement dénisibée par rapport, euh, par rapport au sexe. The only thing that I could really praise Jesus Franco for is his choice in, not women, but a woman, Lina Romé. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, what a woman. His eyes expressed his hopeless longing for her, but his heart denied him the courage to speak. Lina euh, n'aurait jamais eu la vie qu'elle a, qu a, qu a eue si elle n'avait pas rencontré Jess Franco. Il a été son pygmalion, on peut dire. Euh, Lina, elle aurait été petite vendeuse de, 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 de prises uniques euh, en Espagne. Oh, Michael, you're here. We've been waiting for you. 
Three is much nicer. Michael, come make love with us. Elle doit tout à Franco. Lena was only 18 when she met Franco. He was looking for a new type of female star and believed that Lena might be the one. The first major test that he set her was to play the title role in his 1973 film, The Female Vampire. You know that there are two versions. One is a, uh, a regular traditional vampire and a vampire who need human semen. When the vampire uh, need uh, blood for life, she kills the people beating them as a, re a traditional or regular vampire. Do you feel ill at ease being the descendant of a family of vampires? And on the other version, uh, she needs human semen and she makes the necessary with the men. a woman and uh, at this time for censorship it was impossible <laughs> when we decide to make the movie to use the human semen version two years after came legal porno so we were able to sell the movie uh, over the world in the human semen version It's like a kind of bewitching. Once we start to see the movie, you can't stop. There is something special. When we turned a scene of a cul, he put the things in place very vaguely in relation to the position of people. And then, after, he did it. Well, and now, message. <laughs> You're a vicious old sadist, a homosexual. Yes, it's true. A degenerate. Oh, yes. A dirty pig. It's true. A shit eater. Yes, oh, yes. Swine. I disgust you. No, let me go. Ah. A dirty old man. <laughs> when I told somebody in America, uh, a chap who writes um, for Fangoria, he said, My goodness, you're working for Jess Franco? I said, Yes. He said, Well, do you, do you, do you, do you know his work? No. I said, No. He said, Well, one is very good, two you have to be very careful. Yeah, that's it. Go on, try to escape. I'll soon tame you, my pretty beast. He's like a puppet master. You can take, you know, the toughest producer, the worst actor, whatever, stick him in a room with Frank and after half an hour, you know, the guy will just, you know, fall for him. He will just do whatever he wants. And I got on really well with him. He loves, he loves actors. Jess Franco loves very much actors. You know as well as I do that our readers eat up those sadomasochistic stories of yours. Oh, <laughs> I don't invent anything. It's all based on real life experience, not my personal experience. Quand il a envie de faire quelque chose, il en parle avec un, un tel appétit que euh, bon, on a envie de, on a envie de l'aider. Franco made films at a furious pace, sometimes in only a few weeks. His stories rarely made sense. It was as though he was turning the camera on himself, filming his daydreams. Often he played bizarre cameos in his own movies. I don't know why she did it. I know she did it, but don't ask me why, because I'm not God. Because all the people pretend that the director is God. <laughs> Just like likes to speak, but uh, he don't like questions. The Countess of Karlstein. I would like to talk to her. <laughs> he tells what he wants to tell, and he tells a lot of things, but never what you uh, you want to hear. <laughs> I want to see her. <laughs> 
he's dedicated to B movies, you know. He said he wants to make B movies because he likes B movies. He doesn't want to make, you know, big statements about society or all that because he hates it. C'est vrai que s'il avait fait d'autres films, il aurait peut-être eu une carrière euh, plus, plus intéressante. Il a fait ce qu'il qu avait envie de faire, je pense. Franco wrote his own scripts, operated his own camera, composed the music and often acted in his own movies. In this way, he was much closer to a novelist or painter than to a commercial filmmaker. Provided he finished on time and in budget, he had almost total freedom to film what he wanted. À chaque fois que tu vois un film de Jess Franco, même si le film n'est pas une grande réussite, il y a toujours une séquence très chouette qui te reste après et qui te donne des idées pour plus tard et tout. People who are really into into cinema are getting tired of uh, of Hollywood. We must know evil to be able to fight it. They're looking for something different. They're looking for something which is which is personal, which is strange, which is experimental, which is, um, you know, just different. And if you're looking for that, I think Franco is, is, is perfect because he represents the type of cinema which people do because they love it. I think uh, I stopped counting the product lately. But, but uh, about uh, 158 or something like that. 58, 59. Uh, thank you, Jess Franco, to make so beautiful film for us. Franco is like those eccentric artists who make cathedrals out of bottle tops. We don't know why they do it, but we applaud their oddball originality. In a film world based on compromise and conformity, he stands tall, a unique figure of whom it can truly be said, we'll never see his like again.